things where it's just, you know, sometimes we, you know, we take away from the, we think, oh, people won't want to play, which is, of course, ridiculous, because of... Everybody wants to play. Everybody <laughs> wants to play, you know, and there's the, the, fa- the famous saying, you know, the opposite of play isn't work, it's depression. And I think that, you know, I was just reading something this week that was about how there's, you know, whether it's busy work or manual work or physical work or creative work, whatever kind of work it is, it, it engages us. And what we, we tend to think, you know, as meeting planners, people get really busy, they get tired, At the end of the day, you go home, you have a glass of wine, you watch TV, and you actually don't feel better. Whereas if you would have gone home, had a fruit juice, worked in the garden, you know, read a book you were interested in, anything that was actually slightly more engaging, uh-huh. you would feel a lot better. And I think that we, we forget some really obvious basic human tendencies and tend to, when we come to meetings, think, well, we'll play to the lowest level. We'll show them video. We're going to just talk at them. We're going to give them all of the great ideas that are in my head. Um, <laughs> Right. <laughs> right, exactly, which I have so, a kind of a wacky head, so, you know, yeah. sometimes they're, but, but never as good as, as everyone together working yes. towards yes. accomplishing that whole, something. You know, all of us are smarter than any of us. True, right? true. Philosophy, but. Well, the other, I think, and you touched on it, um, which is kind of the nature of human beings. So one of my other, which you, I think you know, one of my other little passions is neuroscience. Yes. And which the actual. so under. But yes. So, yeah, exactly, exactly. And I think it's because people just aren't familiar enough with how it applies directly to our industry. But, true. but the, the actual uh, learning cycle in the human brain yes. is first gathering. So, you, you know, what we're doing here, pulling in all yes. of this new input and information, yeah. and then you sleep on it. Yes. So there has to be that sort of cycle of just letting it percolate a little bit. Then you have to do something active with... Yeah, actually, I think you do something active and then you sleep on it. But, but you know, so you have to or engage maybe that's with. Going to be individual to the person, right? So maybe Could sometimes be. it's going to be because it's that you know twenty percent of what you hear, forty percent of what you see and hear, eighty percent of what you do something with. But yeah. maybe you don't need to do something with it right away. Maybe you need to go away and look at your notes again and just think about it. Yeah, and well, and even individual, act, right? The the act of typing in notes about yes. something is a reinforcing activity that actually helps complete that learning cycle which completely makes sense yeah absolutely so I think as meeting professionals we sometimes forget that it's all human beings that we're dealing with it's true and you know how do they absorb information how do they play with it interact with it become you know active with the you know and again that whole that it is okay to have fun with it and it's okay to not know the ending like you said you wrote eight or 16 different endings yes you don't know going into your session no what idea. What's going to happen? And no how idea. Cool was that, right? Well, it's kind of you know, it's kind of like standing on the edge of a cliff a little bit. Yeah. But I think that that's what makes actually that that kind yeah. of gets that energy oh, yeah. going and gets yeah. you excited to, to go yeah. in there because people will yeah. leave your session and they will be like, "That was cool." Oh, I hope. I, I really hope. I, hope. I think. They, why would well, they? okay. Yeah. So I'll tell you the other part about the session is um, I actually have a secret identity that gets revealed in the session. So I'm a little oh, nervous yeah. that people will be like. That's a little, but we're in Orlando at Disney. That's so right. We had Mickey Mouse at lunch, so yeah. why can't you have an alternate reality? Yeah, why yeah. not? Alter ego, yeah. you know, yeah. something, little superhero powers, yes. you know, something along those lines. Yes. So anyway, Everyone we'll see. Superhero powers. I think that's really important. Yeah. Well, I think that that's going to be great. Thank you so much, Lynn, for talking about engagement. I really appreciate it. I know that Mike is going to have a thousand more questions, so I see future meetings podcasts coming your way. <laughs> Fun. Which is great. I know, right? Big fan. I, Big fan of Mike. Big fan of the meetings podcast. Big fan of Tahira. <laughs> Big fan of Lynn <laughs> and PCMA. Thank you very much. You and are this very is welcome. Your roving reporter Tahira and Dean signing off with the fabulous Lynn Randall. This is Tahira Endian, roving reporter for Meeting Podcast. I'm sitting here with the lovely Nisa Silver, who is with uh, Details Convention and Event Management from Calgary. We're at the PCMA Convening Leaders, and it's great so far. So we're loving getting education here. We think it's you know a spectacular experience. I'm just going to say that for both of us. Yeah, I agree. So, and we're just going to talk a little bit today about education in the events industry because there's obviously informal education, such as we get at conferences, and then formal education. So, want to tell, maybe you could just tell us a little bit about your educational background and experience, and then we'll go from uh, there. My educational background is that I have a Bachelor of Fine Arts from Toronto, from York University, 
and I have a Master's of Hospitality Administration from UNLV. So I've got a lot of formal education in the yes. industry. Um, as well as a lot of experience. And as well as a lot of experience. I've been doing this for over 10 years now. And, and you also teach in the events industry. And I teach in the events yes, industry. Yes, as do I. So we both yeah. share we share that right. teaching of students in part-time programs right. who are yeah. wanting to enter the industry. And Adult in learners. about 30 hours yeah. <laughs> to 60 hours, they anticipate that they will be able to gain the 10 years of experience. Right. Or the, yes. Yeah. Which I think is an, it's an interesting challenge because I think yes. that our industry is full of these amazing, experienced, fantastic planners yeah. Many who have education and many who just kind of fell into it. So I think right. that there's really an argument for both. Well, and I think the programs, too, are also so broad that, you know, I teach at Mount Royal University in Calgary, and the program is six courses long, but you get everybody from corporate planners to I want to be a wedding planner to I'm 18 years old and I don't know what I want to do, but yes. I plan fantastic parties. Yes. So you have all these people coming in to a course yeah. trying to get experience or education yeah. in events, yeah. but events that range from the weddings to the birthday parties to big corporate yeah. events and trade shows. And I think it's always, it, it is a bit of a challenge for sure to teach to, teach to that range. And then, right. of course, I, don't, I, I would say that I, what we see coming out is probably into the industry about 10 to 15 percent of people who are getting some education right. actually then remain in the industry and those and yeah. they become some of our absolute superstars right within the industry which is yeah. I think really fabulous so and there's also then the certifications as well so that's which is another whole discussion mm -hmm. for another day but right. there is absolutely a range again of that formal mm -hmm. and informal education and how we can tie education right. and experience together so yeah. you know so with education what would you say you have found the value, because I have a Bachelor of Hospitality Management okay. and a Diploma in Event and Convention Management, right. so again, a bit of a mix, I and mean, yeah. I did them sort of 18 years apart, yeah. so, and I would say that I'm actually glad that I did my degree later when I had some experience, mm -hmm. because the degree I found really focused more on the business aspects, the right. yield management, the revenue management, right. the, those things that are actually critical to us for being right. successful. Yeah. But would you, what would you say were some of the value points that came out for you from your education? Um, well, my Bachelor of Fine Arts, you know, way back when, is all the creativity. Yeah. The, Which is know, really important in what we yeah, do. Yeah, and for me, the event production, because I was yes. in theater. So, um, it's a know, great background. Yeah, I use yeah. that every day yeah. in scripting and putting the AV together. Um, and then my master's was much more, because it was a master's level, it was much more academic. Yes. So, and more statistics, but, you know, also looking at things at a much higher level. And do you find so. that when you're talking to your clients who could be, you know, engineers or scientists or mm -hmm. doctors or, that yeah. there's, a, there's an inherent value in being able to speak that language of business? Yeah, so. absolutely. Well, and I also think as a planner, you need to understand the business of it. You yes. know, of, you know, revenues and getting people there and meeting the bottom line yeah. and, you know, ROI and understanding that on multiple levels. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, and again, that ROI and really understanding that there is a, there is a business model and a science right. that really goes behind that. Where it, and yeah. there is a certain amount of experience that will teach you that. But I do, I think that, you know, when we start to look at education and then I think also, you know, the other... One of our struggles in our industry is, you know, salaries and right. recognition right. and, you know, it's the, sort of one of the first departments to go because yeah. often when you're in a meeting planning department, you are, don't have that educational background or that degree or diploma that HR departments are looking yeah. for. So they're like, all right, so somebody else can do this job. Right. And we tend to lose the value perception, I think, right. sometimes of, of our industry as a yeah. whole, you know, it's everybody works exceptionally hard to produce yeah. these incredible meetings and events yeah. that do show a return on investment, yeah. a return on objectives. But I think there's still, you know, our industry still has a way to go in terms of the value that we bring and that perceived value so that we're not just one step above the administrative assistant. It's very true. You know, that... You look at all the components that need to actually go into yeah. producing a great meeting or event. Right. Yeah. You know, that, it's... you know, not only are we at the table, which, you know, we've been talking of being at the table for 10 plus years. Yes. But 
the that, strategic value, the strategic business right. value that a great meeting planner can bring right. with education and with right. understanding yes. all of those things that go into right. the background of a business in, and yeah. how are you going to use a meeting to elevate that process. Right. You know, and it's sort of like, you, even if you look at the Christmas party, Yes. you know, where, you, okay, here's the Christmas party. Okay, well, yeah, we're going to have a Christmas party, but having a planner who understands why are we going to have the Christmas party and having it be part of the, okay, it's part of retention, it's part of, you know, company morale and making sure that that Christmas party meets those objectives and even understanding that your Christmas party should have objectives. Yes. Right? And yeah. then it's not just a big booze fest of yeah. why we're doing it. Yeah. It's yeah. very true. So I think those are, I think those are all really good points. I think yeah. I, I personally hope that we continue to see a growth right. in the, you know, I, I love at PCMA, there's 11 students who are here from yeah. the program I took 20 years ago. Nice. I know, right? I think that's so awesome. And I think yeah. that, and I love that they're also understanding that, you know, it's not only what they're learning in school, but it's also about getting out into industry, right. you know, keeping yeah. up the informal side of the right. education. and networking and Absolutely. you know and really being at a place where you are surrounded by people who do under who are really working to understand the value of what yeah. professional management mm -hmm. in meetings means and how yes. it differs yeah, yeah. so Absolutely. I think that's great do you have any last comments or no thank you for our well, little interview thank you Nisa Silver I really appreciate it yeah this is Tahira Ending Roving Reporter signing off from PCMA Convening Leaders This is Tahira Endine, roving reporter for Meeting Podcast. I'm here with the lovely Christine Melendez, who is with Association for Corporate Growth. Association for Corporate Growth. That sounds super interesting. So tell, actually, tell me about that association. It's an association. We have 14,500 members <laughs> throughout the world and 58 chapters. We just opened a newest chapter in Brazil. And our members are all the guys and gals responsible for mergers and acquisitions um, at a certain dollar level. So, so you have a lot of A types? We have a lot of A types, 95% yeah. men, 45 to 55 late adapters to technology. Yeah. There's lots of fun things. Yeah. yeah so. They're a great group, though, and they're really passionate about what they do, and they love networking. Well, yeah. So I was going to say, that's exactly the kind of group you want coming to your events, right? <laughs> so, but, you, but getting their attention, I'm sure, has its challenges. It does. It's really interesting looking at demographics from registration reports from years past. Like, everybody registers right before early bird. <laughs> <laughs> and then three weeks out. Right. It's it's a really interesting. Yeah. They're looking at their calendars. They're looking at their pipeline of business and deals and figuring out whether or not they need to add some additional networking into their yeah. schedules. And our meeting is really networking focused yeah. with uh, some education, but they don't. It, it's not a driver for attendance at all. Oh, so the networking is the driver. Yeah. So the now, how list. are you reaching out to people? We are doing a lot of new things this year. I just started last January, so this is like my first full year where I've been able to implement my own plan, communications marketing plan. So we, we designed a new microsite that they had never, it had been integrated with their regular website. Okay. It was really difficult to navigate, really, um, you know, just it, it just wasn't user friendly. Yeah. And when you have somebody with like very quick um, needs to register and they don't have a lot of time to find yeah. things. Or need to make it easy. wading through stuff. Right, you had to make it really easy. Uh, so we're doing a lot of email campaigns and list segmentation yeah. to the different types of members that we have, talking about the content that we have for them, and then traditional pieces, print pieces, postcards, okay. etc. Yeah. So we're still, kind of doing. They still it. work. They do. Yeah, that's the thing. So we have um, very little adaption of Twitter or Facebook okay. or anything, but they're pretty good on LinkedIn. Okay. So we're starting to reach out on Twitter on a daily basis yeah. and trying to expand our reach, mainly to media outlets to let okay. them know about us and Which our events and stuff. Yeah. And what kind of events are you doing? Well, you have one major event every year, and it's in April, and it's a convention, and it's or it's kind of a trade show, kind of a networking thing. Um, so now you must have found so, this. We're right now we're at PCMA Convening Leaders. We're inside of the trade show reimagined. So you must have found some of these concepts actually pretty interesting. It is really interesting, and I love the engagement and the interactivity of this session. Yeah. Um, I'm going to call it a session because yeah. it's like a lot of little sessions inside of it one. It is. Yes. Um, Eating and, and networking and sitting down and yeah. learning, I think, is a really nice concept to explore further. And I think that our members would really be interested in that. Maybe adding 
you know, a bar or, you know, some other components yes. to really keep people in a, in a, so in think a about, so think yeah. about this. So imagine that you have your bar and then beside that is a genius bar. So you can go get a drink at one and then you can go to the next, put your arm up and have